Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unboxing Tomorrow Adventure in Electronics, Robotics, and Communication Systems. And a bit of a rare treat with an actual unboxing of the Arduino Pro Portenta Carrier Board. Today I'll be unboxing the carrier board and a brand new Arduino Portenta H7 just like the one I've already modified. So if you see these side by side, just remember these are separate part numbers. To recap, the Portenta H7 is Arduino's industry-focused platform, but it's also good for training and self-training. It combines dual-core processing and wireless and cryptographic assets with a processor fast enough to run its own operating system. The breakout carrier is an expansion on this, and as a separate part number, it allows you to get the full benefit of the platform, even if you're only prototyping. I should note I'm not affiliate with Arduino in any way, other than being a customer for over a decade, and I was not compensated or discounted in any way for these purchases. While there is a Pro Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, and a standard version for the web, every project I've featured here so far uses the common Arduino IDE that you're probably already used to. Before I get started, I'd like to first thank my affiliates for making projects like these possible. TorGuard Privacy Protection Services, providers of VPN, business VPN, private email, and physical VPN routers, and Satoshi Labs, maker of the Trezor cryptocurrency wallet. Trezor is a key management device that gives you a way to secure your crypto without the need for a centralized exchange. This works with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and several others. I've used Trezor wallets for many years now, and you can protect your crypto and help this blog at the same time if you use the affiliate link in the video description. Right off the bat, we can see that the breakout board has the same style of packaging and specifications, much like the Portenta itself. Inside, we can see all the electronics are protected by anti-static shielding materials. By the way, before you go any further or open the package, this is best done at an anti-static workstation, which is something that I recommend if you're handling printed circuit boards. There is no manual, so instead we'll reference the official materials straight from the product website, which is where I'm going to get the schematic, datasheet, and other details. At this time, I'll also unbox the other H7, and just like before, I'll remember to remove the Wi-Fi antenna from the bottom of the package, which is small and easy to miss. I'll also attach the antenna now, while it's still easy to do so. Back at the breakout carrier board, we can identify a few landmarks, starting in the center, the top layer contains the footprint for the H7 itself. Here, we can find a pair of Hirosei connectors, and they're designed to snap onto the connectors on the bottom of the H7. The bottom layer contains the mating connector. This shows that the breakout board is a pass-through device that can go between the H7 and anything it would connect to. The dashed outline on the top layer will show you which way to point the H7, and the USB connector on the H7 should be on the same side as the USB connector on the carrier board. To attach, visually line up the Hirose connectors, and when they're lined up, gently and flatly press them together until you hear them both click together. If you're like me and you already mounted connectors like these pin headers on the H7, there is a 3.5mm board to board gap, and if your pins don't protrude farther than that, you're probably okay. Going to the lower left corner and traveling clockwise, we have the Ethernet connector, which is the tallest feature on the board. The nearby breakout footprint is headerless, so you'll have to decide for yourself if you want headers, sockets, or something else entirely. The pitch is the common 2.54 millimeters, and the plating material, unless I'm mistaken, is the electroless nickel immersion gold. From there, we have the micro SD card holder and its breakouts, USB, a blue terminal block for accepting a 5 volt DC supply, and by the way, any power you deliver here will also power the Portenta H7 and the CAN bus, something we'll see later. From there, we have a 20 pin JTAG connector, two digital audio interfaces, a camera interface, two serial audio interfaces, PCIe, two UARTs, something I covered recently, two spy buses, a lithium battery holder, channels for PWM and analog, including positive and negative voltage references, general purpose pins, I2C, two CAN buses, display port, and finally two more UARTs, and by the way, these all do support hardware flow control. For manual interfaces, we have the power on push button, which I would imagine can wake up the processor, 
and a dual inline switch. The first switch will place the portenta in bootloader mode, and the second switch will select the address. As for the headerless design, for this blog, I'm probably going to go with gold plated or gold flashed headers, mostly because these seem to be lower friction, and the gold plating avoids long term aging effects, like the fretting corrosion I mentioned in a previous article. But tin plating is also pretty good, so we'll see how it plays out. You might be wondering why there's no lithium cell included, and I'd imagine this is for two reasons. First, not everyone would need it, but more importantly, lithium cells are costly to ship, and this would only extend the cost of the board or its shipping time. In case you're wondering, this non-rechargeable cell, or primary lithium, appears to be totally separate from the rechargeable or secondary cell, which has its own dedicated connector on the H7. Finally, the four corners of the breakout board each have a single 2mm hole that can easily fit a threaded screw with no problem. Like other Arduinos, the H7 is meant to drastically reduce development time, and I think the carrier board is going to take this even further. And I would agree that this system is probably a good entry point for new product development or even technical training. If I had to change one thing, it would probably be to put more spacing between the PWM channels and the analog inputs. This would mostly be to avoid signal coupling, but I don't even know if this would be an issue. If it were, I would probably just space out the wiring, or any custom cabling I wanted to attach, or switch over to using the connectors on the H7 itself. By the way, signals provided by the H7 are also directly wired to their equivalent on the carrier board. You can learn the details on the official Arduino website. For me, my next step will probably be checking and updating the wireless firmware. If you found this useful, be sure to like and share the video. This helps me figure out what people are interested in, and it helps the channel in general. The monthly poll for May 2021 wants to know which style of braces you prefer in C and similar languages. Feel free to let me know, or join the official poll on the Unboxing Tomorrow Patreon. Stay posted for more projects in electronics, robotics, and communication systems, and as always, have a great day.